everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm super excited to share with all of you my first impressions of a couple new Dior products that I recently hauled. I have here the Soft Cashmere palette from Dior. This is my first ever Dior palette. And then I have one of their new Shine lipsticks. This is in the shade Bandana and it's also my first Dior lipstick. In addition to these products, I'll be building a look with my existing Dior products, plus first impressions of other luxury products that I've hauled recently. Dior is a brand that I'm still pretty new to. It's not like Pat McGrath or Natasha Denona or Charlotte Tilbury where I have a decent set of their overall line. I only have a few Dior products, but I'm really excited to try out some more of their products and see what all the hype is about. So if you're interested in watching my first impressions and seeing how I got today's look, then just stick around. So to start out with the base, I'm gonna go in with this little sample of the Dior Forever Skin Glow. I have this in the shade 2N, which is probably a little bit light for me at the moment, but we'll see how this goes. So I'll start just by putting this on one side of my face so you guys can see the effect of this foundation. If you want a more in-depth examination of this foundation, I do have a video doing a side-by-side -side comparison between this and the new NARS foundation. And overall, I really like both foundations. In that comparison, I would say the NARS went out ever so slightly, but both of them are really excellent, relatively glowy, natural-looking foundations. If you put a sheer layer on, it kind of just looks like you have a filter on your face. So I think you guys can see that a little bit on this side right now. So if we compare the two sides of my face, there's not a ton of coverage on this side, but it just looks a little smoother and more perfected. And the shade is a little bit light for me at the moment since I have been in the sun lately, but I think I can still make it work. Definitely we'll need to go in with some bronzer later. Now let me just dot this on this other side. The one thing I will note with this foundation is it's not the best if you want something really long lasting or if you wanna avoid having to powder it down. This does get pretty glowy by the end of the day. So even though my skin is on the dry side, I find when I wear this foundation, I do need to powder it down still. And I'm using my Refer number 17 brush just to blend everything in. So here we have the Dior foundation down and I think it's looking really nice overall. Other than the fact that my face is looking a little ghastly, I think the, the finish is really pretty. Nice and glowy, still kind of natural, a little bit of dewiness, but definitely way more perfected. So for concealer today, I'm just gonna go in with my ABH Magic Touch Concealer since this is also a pretty light concealer in terms of shade and given that this foundation is a little bit light for me I want to make sure I can still highlight some of the center of my face and I'm going to go in with my soft concealer brush from Sonia G to just blend this in so for the brows today I'm going to go in with this brand new Gucci brow pencil in the shade 4 let's open this up ooh Oh, that's cute. It comes with a little Gucci sharpener, which is in the same color as this packaging. Ooh, nice. And here is the brow pencil. It definitely looks a bit more luxurious than your typical brow pencil. This lid is actually made out of metal, which gives it some weight. So I'm just going to brush this through my brows. It's been a while since I've used a brow pencil that is more of a powder consistency but I used to really love the Lancome brow pencil. They had a powder brow pencil that for years was my ride or die favorite. And so I was excited to give this guy a try since most of my brow pencils nowadays are a little bit more of a creamy gel formulation. All right, that's blending out quite nicely. Definitely gives some of that soft effect that you associate with powders but this pencil was still very pigmented and creamy. I would say the spoolie is a little bit on the stiff and scratchy side, so I do usually prefer a slightly softer spoolie brush, but I am liking the effect of this powder. I feel like a little bit goes a long way, but it still looks pretty soft overall. 
nice if you want a soft but still defined brow look. And to set my brows, I'm gonna go in with my ABH Clear Brow Gel. This is also a pretty new product for me. I've only used this a couple times. In general, I'm not the biggest fan of clear brow gels because I usually like to have a little bit of tint in my brow gel. I wasn't super impressed with this product the first couple times I wore it because I didn't really see much of a difference. So I don't know, we'll, we'll see if it makes much of a difference in today's look. And then for eye primer, I'm also going to try this brand new ABH eye primer. It's a cute little mini size and I actually picked this up because Morgan Turner recommended it for use with pastel shadows. It's supposed to be sort of a light colored primer. So today we're not doing pastels, but I am just curious how this primer works on the lids. Let's see. Okay, yeah, it is very white and I think I squeezed out too much. So let me just start with a small portion of it. Most days I actually prefer not to go in with eye primer. My eyes are not that oily, so I find that I can get away with just using concealer. And the concealer also sometimes helps with the matte shadows blending into my skin. Whereas with a primer, sometimes the mattes will get a little bit patchy. So we'll see how this primer goes today. If it can prevent both fallout and patchiness, that would be ideal. Alrighty, there we go. So overall, my face is looking <laughs> extremely white right now, but don't worry, we will bronze things up later on. But first, let's powder. So I have here my Dior Backstage Powder No Powder in the shade 3N. So this will also probably add a little bit of depth to my skin. 3N is a little bit deep on me. I probably should have gotten 2N instead. As you can see, it looks like a slightly deep powder, maybe very light bronzer on my skin tone. And I'm gonna go in with my Buffer Pro from Sonia G. This is a powder that you need something pretty stiff in order to pick it up. A lot of people use a powder puff with this instead of a brush. But for me, I've just been going in with this Buffer Pro, which I find can still pick it up. Mine does have a little bit of hard pan though, if you guys can see that. So, so I do need to really dig my brush in sometimes. On the whole, I think this is a really nice powder if you want something that is not going to make your face look too matte, but will still set your base. This powder does have more of a satin sheen to it, so there's no glitter particles, but you can maybe see in the swatch, it doesn't look flat matte at all. So overall, I do really like this powder on days when I am going for a little bit more of a glowy look, but if you have really oily skin, it might not keep your oils at bay for the whole day. I do find when I use this powder, often by the end of the day, I am looking a little bit more shiny than I would like. Alrighty, so now the product I am the most excited to try out, which is this Dior Eyeshadow Quint. This is what the box looks like. And here is the back. One interesting thing I noticed is it says it only has a six month shelf life. I really hope that's not the case because there's no way I can finish any eyeshadow within six months. And I usually keep my eyeshadows indefinitely. I haven't really had many eyeshadows that I've decluttered due to age. So hopefully this lasts longer than six months. But here is the compact. It's really pretty. It definitely looks more luxurious than you might think given how simple the packaging is. Very nice. Has a slight weight to it. And then on this side, you can see that silver detailing that says CD. Very nice touch. And this silver part is actually a button you press and then you can open the compact. And it comes with these two little applicators. One is a brush tip and one is a sponge tip. I am definitely not gonna be using these today, but these can be handy for travel. And here we have the gorgeous compact. I will say this looks so much prettier in person than just what I saw in pictures. You can see, especially for that center shade, there's a really pretty embossing on it. 
And I just love the look of baked formulas. They look so beautiful and luxe. So now let's swatch these shadows. I'm gonna start with these top two. Ooh, that's a really pretty metallic taupe shade. And then let's see, this one doesn't really have much of a base to it. It's more of just a really shimmery highlight sort of shade. And then let's go in with the center shade. Ooh, this is really nice as well. A bit warmer than what I anticipated based on how it looks in pan. It's more of a satin taupey shade, almost a bit of camel in there. And then let's go into these last two shades. So this one is also a similar sort of satin shade, but instead in a cooler undertone. And here we have the one matte in the palette, very, very pigmented and creamy with one swipe. Wow. So here we have the swatches close up and this is such a pretty palette. I'm really excited to get these on my lids. I would say that it looks a little bit boring when you just look at it first, but these do have such beautiful formulations. I think because these two have that sort of satin finish, you can use them in place of mattes in the crease and then use this to deepen up. And then this is probably the most show-stopping shade, lots of shine. But you can also maybe use this as a topper on top of either of these or use this for inner corner or brow bone highlight. So to start out this eyeshadow look, I'm gonna go into this cooler toned taupey shade with my refer number 27 brush. And I'm gonna use this as a crease color today. So we'll see how well this works. I'm gonna first just put this on the outer third of my lid and then gently diffuse it upwards and outwards. Okay, this is looking very nice so far. I think this sort of formulation is really flattering for a wide variety of different types of skin because it's just so smooth and satin. I think even if you have a lot of texture on your lids or if you have mature skin, this would still look really nice. Wow, this is really such a dream to blend. I'm gonna have to try sometime this primer with some of my other eyeshadows as well because I'm impressed how well the Dior shadows are sitting on this primer. So it's hard for me to say how much of it is the primer versus the shadows, but so far these two together are doing pretty well. So there we go, that's just a very soft wash. And you can see even though this might look a little bit deep in swatch, sheared out, this is a really beautiful, fairly natural, cool toned look. I think this on the lash line and smudged out would be really nice for just an easy one and done look. But of course, we're not gonna stop there. So now I'm gonna go into this matte shade and concentrate this closer to the lash line, but also diffuse it into the crease. I really like that this shadow is quite deep because this is the only matte you have in this palette. And so being able to add a lot of depth really enhances the versatility. I noticed in a lot of Dior quints, it's common not to have any deeper matte shades. So that's one thing that attracted me to this soft cashmere palette. It seems like it has a better balance of light and deep shades. So there we go. Again, this is blending in very seamlessly. Now I'm gonna go in with my Chikahoto GSN 9 into the center shade and put this all over the lid to see how that looks. Okay, this is definitely a very, very satin shade. So you can see that it almost doesn't even look like it's a shimmer shade. Of course, you can still tell that it's not matte. There is a little bit of sheen, but overall it just looks very natural not too dissimilar from my skin tone. So I think this quint would be really excellent for an everyday work look as well. I mean, if you want something that's just all over the lids to even out your skin tone, add a little bit of shine, this center shade would be really nice for that if you have a similar skin tone to me. Now with that same brush, I'm gonna go into this more shimmery shade. And I would normally go in with a finger for this sort of shade, but I'm curious to see how much fallout we get with a brush. 
Okay, this is packing on very nicely, quite pigmented. I'm basically going to put this all over the other shade because that shade didn't really stand out very much and for me today I am going for a slightly more glam look. And I'm not really seeing much in terms of fallout, which is great given how high impact this shade is. Very, very pretty. A little really goes a long way and it's applying beautifully with a brush. And now with my Sonia G Mini Booster, I'm going into this shimmery shade, putting this in the inner portion of my eyes, starting with the inner corner and brushing it outwards. This is a very unique shade because it, it really has no base at all. It basically is kind of like a glittery, sparkly shade, but yeah, not much in the way of a base. I would say it has a little bit more glittery particles than I would like for inner corner and brow bone highlight. So let me actually see if I put this more on top of the other shade, how it looks. I can't see it a whole lot on top of the other shimmery shade. It looks very white on camera, but in person it actually has a little bit more of a peachiness to it, but that's not necessarily translating very much on the eyes, I would say. So on the eyes, it just adds some shimmer particles, but not much else. So now let me just go in with a little bit more of that deep matte shade to just add some more depth and also just further blend out the crease. Overall, all of these shades are blending into each other very, very beautifully. They create a very nice, very monochromatic, cohesive, neutral look. Now for the lower lash line, I'm going back in with that mini booster into that cooler satin shade and just sweeping that all over the lower lash line. Then taking my refer number 23 brush, I'm going lightly into the deepest shade and then running that along the outer corner. This is such a tiny little brush. And this is my first time using this and the refer number 27. And cleaning that off, I'm just gonna take a little bit of this glittery shade and see if I can run that on the inner thirds, just for a hint of shimmer. Alrighty, so here we have the eyeshadow look done. So I'm gonna go off camera, put on some eyeliner, and be back for the face products. So here we have the final eye look. What do you guys think? I'll list in the description box all the products that I have on today. So now for the face, let me put on some bronzer first because I'm looking super, super pale. So I have here my Gucci bronzer in the shade number two. And I'm gonna go in with this brand new refer number 19 brush. Never used this before, so let's see how it goes. Wow, you can tell your base is really light when <laughs> Bronzers that you typically use come across as much more pigmented. This is a pretty nice shape for bronzer though. All around the perimeter of my face. And for blush, I'm gonna try out this brand new blush from Laura Mercier. I have this in the shade Ginger. And I'm really excited to try this out because I previously tried Laura Mercier's formula in the shade Fresco. And I really enjoyed the formulation, but that shade has some slight shimmer in it and the shimmer reads a little bit silvery on my face. And so I want to try out one of their matte formulations. So let me actually give you guys a quick swatch of ginger. This looks like it should be a pretty natural looking blush overall buildable on the skin. You can see it's sort of a nude peachy shade. And I'm gonna go in with my brand new refer number 18 brush and just sweep this all over the cheeks. And all of these refer brushes are brand new. I'm gonna wash them right after this video. But I always do like just trying out the brushes before I wash them because they just look very nice and tidy before being washed. Natural hair brushes always flare out a little bit and look a little bit more disheveled after washing, unless you put them in some special brush holder, which I can't really be bothered to do. Alrighty, so this is a very pretty blush overall. Definitely very sheer and buildable on my skin tone. I would say if you have a very deep complexion, it might be too light for you because I'm definitely packing on the layers with this blush. 
But if you're more on the fair side, I think this is a pretty safe formulation and shade to go in with. And since I do like to have a little bit of shine, I'm gonna go in with my new Romance Light Highlighter from Charlotte Tilbury. This is a little bit on the cool tone side, but I'm gonna go into this second shade, which is a little bit more golden, and just sweep this on the high points of my cheeks. I have found that once you get through the overspray of this highlight, it is a little bit less blingy than what I saw in my first impressions. I mean, it still is a pretty bright highlight, no doubt about that, but it's slightly less metallic without that overspray. And let me just use that blush brush again to go over that a little bit. I am seeing a little bit of a cast from the highlight. And now for the lips. So I'm really excited to try out these two new products. I have here the Natasha Denona I Need a Rose Lip Liner in the shade Kala. I also have the corresponding lipstick to this, so I'll have to show you guys that in a separate video. And then I've been really excited about these Dior Addict Shine lipsticks. Charlotte Holdcroft has been raving about this formula over the past month, and so I really wanted to get my hands on this. But let's first start out with this Natasha Denona lip liner. This is how the packaging looks. So here we have the shade just on the outer perimeter of my lips, and this is such a lovely creamy formula. This is my overall favorite lip liner formula. It's the most long lasting and creamy lip liner I've ever tried. And that's pretty impressive because usually the creamier the lip liner, the less long lasting it is. But this manages to tick both of those boxes. And this shade is just really, really pretty as well. So I'm really glad to have this in my collection. And this has a nice weight to it as well. I need to compare this with my other I Need a Nude lip liner because I feel like this is a little bit weightier than how I remember them. So next let's go into this Dior lipstick. And here we have the gorgeous refillable packaging. It's black and says Dior in silver at the bottom. So let's see, how do we open this? I guess you just, yeah, you just pull that. And here is the lipstick. It actually has a little CD embossing on the top. Hopefully you guys can see that. So I love this packaging. This is really pretty. The Dior emblem especially looks so classy. So I'm really excited about this. I would say the bullet actually looks a lot less shiny than what I was anticipating given that this is a very high shine formula. But let's see how it looks in swatch. All right, yeah, definitely pretty balmy in swatch. So you can see that it's overall on the sheer side, really beautiful nude shade that I think is gonna go well with this overall color story. So let's get this on the lips. Oh wow, that's so soft. I'm really sad that the CD emblem is already gone, but wow, this really glides on like butter. Wow, that's probably the softest lip formula I've ever put on my lips. Very, very juicy. It has a pretty strong fragrance to it. It's a very fruity scent, kind of like black currant, but so pretty, wow. I will say the tube got a little bit messy with application since it is a very soft formula. So I tried not to push out too much of the product at once but I'm really liking this. Wow, that was just one swipe, and it actually gives pretty decent pigmentation, especially on top of that lip liner, and it does have a really beautiful shine to it. But the thing that's impressing me the most is definitely just how soft and smooth it is. I feel like I have nothing on my lips. It was just so creamy to apply, and so you don't really feel like you have a thick layer of anything but yet it does give beautiful, even pigmentation. So I'm gonna have to wear this throughout the day and give you guys an update in terms of how it wears, but I am very, very impressed just based on initial impressions. This is a really special formula. I buy a lot of these sorts of pigmented, but still very comfortable, glossy formulations, but this one is definitely one of the thinnest that I've ever felt while still having really high shine and good pigmentation. And it just feels so thin and lightweight on the lips. 
Also, this shade, Bandana, is really nice in that it doesn't have any shimmer particles in it. When I swatched these in store, I did notice that some of them do come with shimmer particles, but this one doesn't have any shimmer at all from what I can tell. It just has a really nice juicy shine to it. So here we have the final look. What do you guys think? Overall, I am really digging all of these products that I tried on my face today. I think everything was just so beautiful and effortless. This is just a really nice everyday glam look and you can also tone this down to be much more natural if you want as well. So now to run through all of these products. Let's first talk about all of the Dior products since that's the topic of today's video. So I would say the complexion is the part that I may be less jazzed about. Overall, I think the foundation plus powder look pretty good, especially when I'm looking at my face in camera. It looks so seamless, not dry at all, but also not shiny. When I look close up in a mirror though, I do feel like there is some emphasizing of lines on my face. So my smile lines and also some of the fine lines I have on my forehead. Not a big deal. I mean, I think overall it looks very nice, but I will say compared to some other base product combinations I've tried recently, I still prefer my NARS or my Lisa Eldridge foundations. In terms of the eyeshadow, I am really loving this eye look. This is my first ever Dior Quint, and I've been eyeing Dior for a very long time, but it's quite pricey, and you know, their color stories are not exactly the most unique. But I can get now why people shell out so much for these palettes. I just keep looking at my eyes. They are so multi-dimensional and so pretty, even though this look was extremely, extremely easy to put together. I think these two satin shades are just so versatile. You can use them in place of mattes in the crease, or you can use them all over the lid if you want a more satin look. Also, this deep brown shade over here is just so easy to blend out and build up, which is really impressive seeing how deep it is. Often with these sorts of deep brown colors, I find that it can get really patchy really easily, but this one just looks so beautiful and adds some really natural looking depth to the lids. This shade over here also just has so much beautiful shine. I mean, when I say I'm staring at my lids, I'm mostly staring at this shade over here. I would say this last shade over here is one that I'm not super excited about. It's nice, and I think it makes for a pretty shimmery topper, but I'm not a huge fan of it in the inner corner and brow bone area. It's just okay, not great for that. I prefer something that has a little bit more of a satin finish. I will have to try this though layered over these two satin shades because I think it might stand out on its own a little bit more in that context. Overall though, really loving this look, really loving this palette. I feel like this is a really perfect everyday palette that can really take you from day to night without having to work hard or think a lot about your look. And then for this Dior lipstick, I am extremely, extremely impressed based on just my initial impression. Like I said, I try a lot of this kind of formulation and so I wasn't necessarily expecting this to blow my socks off. I figured maybe this would be a nice shade and also really bougie packaging, but I wasn't expecting it to be so different from similar formulations I've tried in the past. Of course, I can't give you guys my final verdict yet because I wanna wear this for a full day and see how it fares, but it is amazing upon initial application. Just so beautiful, so comfortable, yet so lightweight. I've really never experienced a product that's this lightweight and yet gives so much hydration, pigmentation, and shine. So provided it wears well, this might quickly shoot up to be one of my overall favorite lip products. In terms of the other new products I tried out today, so far I like the eye primer from ABH. It worked really well with the shadows that I have on today. I had no issue blending any of the shadows out. But of course, because this was a new eyeshadow palette, I can't say for sure if that's just because the Dior eyeshadows are so great or if this primer is so great. So I'm looking forward to trying this out with my Natasha Denona Pastel palette. Since pastels are definitely a formulation that has a little bit more trouble in terms of adherence and blending out on the lid. So hopefully this helps with that. 
In terms of the brows, I like my first use of this Gucci brow pencil. It was really quick and easy, and I feel like it did a good job of both providing some hair-like strokes, but also just some even pigmentation throughout the brows. I'm not someone who's very precise with my brows, as you guys can tell, so I'm not going for that really defined Instagram brow most days. So for a very simple, fairly natural looking brow, I think this did a great job. In terms of the ABH Clear Brow Gel, I'm honestly still on the fence about this. I probably someday just need to do it on one brow and leave the other brow unset because I don't really see much of a difference. I don't think my brows look more laminated or anything. So I don't know, you guys should tell me if you see much of a difference, but when it comes to clear brow gels, I normally don't feel like they have that much impact on my brows. In terms of the Laura Mercier blush, I am liking it on first impression. Like I said, I have tried her blushes before, but not her matte formulation. So overall, I would say that I think most days I'll still want to pair this with a shimmer because I do like having a little bit more of a highlight effect on my face. But as a matte blush, it looked really pretty, it was very easy to build up on the cheeks, nice sheer even layers and overall a very natural look. That said, if you have a deeper skin tone, I think this shade Ginger might not show up very well on your skin. In terms of highlighter, this was not my first impression of the Charlotte Tilbury Romance Light Highlighter. In fact, if you're curious about this highlighter or the quad that she released with it, definitely check out my dedicated video to that. But I do like how the highlight is looking on my skin today. In my previous video, I built it up a lot more and I also had it on top of a very high shine blush. But today having it on top of a matte blush, I think looks a lot better. As you guys can see, it's overall a much more natural sheen. Still a pretty bright highlight, but buffed into the skin, this looks pretty nice. I don't see any glitter particles at all. It's just a really nice, healthy sheen. Finally, I'm loving the Natasha Denona I Need a Rose lip liner. I mean, I knew I loved this formula already, so that was no surprise, but I do really like the shade as well. I use the shade Naya from her line quite often when I wanna deepen up the outer portion of my lips. And so I wanted something that was a little bit more mid-tone for days when I'm not looking for a really contoured lip effect. And so I think this one really fits the bill and I'm really glad I picked it up in the last sale. So that's it for today's video. I would love to hear in the comments down below if you guys have tried any of these products and if so, what you think about them. And more broadly, if you are a big Dior aficionado, I would love to hear what your favorite products are. So far, I've been pretty impressed with most of the Dior products I've tried, so definitely this is a brand I want to continue developing my knowledge in and picking up some more products. If you liked today's video, then please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for joining me today, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!